right, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, welcome once again to... There we go. I am, of course, the Mighty Pong. I'm Crux. And, and oh, well, our special guest today is... Forge. There Forge. she is. There, there we are. Okay. Bam. <laughs> And uh, so here's what we're going to be talking about today. We are going to be talking about uh, at the beginning of the year, everything, you know, you know, you know what happened at the beginning of the uh, last year. I don't need to go into that. But all of a sudden we're alone at home. Nobody to talk to. Nobody, you know, nobody to, to tell us to, to, to do a thing. Nobody to bring us out of the house. No I, one I to... don't know. You know what? My cats are very demanding. I do get told very many things. Yeah, see, I don't have cats. <laughs> Everybody just kind of left us alone so we could just play video games. And um, it was kind of nice. <laughs> but, <laughs> but some people didn't like that. Uh, so a lot of people started cooking. So that's what we're going to be talking about here uh, in, in just a little bit. But before we go there, quick announcement on the shop. Now, uh, this uh, program is, is being presented on behalf of the Sin Shop. Now, what is the Sin Shop, you might say? And what I would reply to you in that case is, the Sin Shop is a maker hacker space that's located in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, we offer the tools and equipment uh, that you can use to make pretty much whatever you can think of. Now, we're currently closed for renovation, so you're going to have to wait just a little bit to come check out the shop. But our members are currently working as hard as they can to get the shop back in action just as soon as possible. Now, if you're in the Vegas area and you'd like to help, Join our Discord and check out the shop build-out channel to see what you can do to get the shop back in action. Now, to join our Discord, you're going to go to sinshop.org forward slash Discord to find the latest information. And to make sure that you're notified of our future events, including virtual ones like this, you can join us at meetup.com forward slash sinshop. And with that, oh, hey, well, thank, thank you so much for the, uh, for the sub there. All right, so food, food thing. Or food. Food is All making. Right. Food is valid making. <laughs> food, indeed, it's it's one. We're of talking those. about you know maker spaces. Cook cooking is making. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. No, no, no. That's totally true. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's <laughs> something that I've never gotten into, and unfortunately, it's something <laughs> that I don't think we've ever had on the show. But <laughs> cooking is very much making. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm I'm I was kind of glad you you uh, you proposed this uh, this idea to me last <laughs> week, and I was like, oh yeah, no, <laughs> we should absolutely do that. Yeah. Yeah, because we do have not actually not started from me. We have the member started channel on our Discord of of the Cook Club. I think what is it, Negative K's mm -hmm. Cook Club? Yeah. So yeah. that we we all started chatting and realized, you know what? Hey, dang, a lot actually picked up cooking because we realized we we don't feel comfortable going to places. Absolutely, yeah. So mm -hmm. so everybody apparently, I because I remember this when when the whole thing started, is that everybody and their brother in law was talking about bread there there was there was a bread baking phase of the pandemic you go through on social media and everyone was talking about like all right these are the phases bread baking was a phase so i don't know why <laughs> <laughs> okay because uh, that was gonna be my next question i was like because i i don't understand why that why that is like i mean i think maybe because like all the shelves were barren uh of <laughs> toilet paper and i guess bread mm -hmm. Yeah, well, bread, bread was not, everything was empty. So, so I guess I've kind of got a theory thanks, of why Jennifer. everyone. Hey, yeah, thank <laughs> hey, you, then. Look at all the subs. Hooray! But yeah, I think, I think I've got a theory for why people started baking bread. All right. Um, what one of which is like, we there were just there was no bread on the shelves. I remember, you know, if you if you got the news of like we're gonna be locked down for you know what we thought was two weeks <laughs> you went to the store like two minutes too late and all the bread was empty on yeah. the shelves yeah. so nah, you, people needed bread um but i also think it's just a matter of like it's it's something that takes a bit of time it is like a rewarding project to do that you can sit there and you can you know rise the yeast and have to like knead the dough and mm -hmm. you know watch it and feel accomplished after it. So I think it was just, you know, it's why do people like baking for the act of baking? It's, it's a rewarding thing to do. But but yeah. yeah, I think a matter of like, we couldn't get bread and you can just buy the ingredients so that will stay on the shelf when we're going to be stuck inside for who knows how long. It makes some sense. Yeah. Well, oh, well, <laughs> well now I understand. <laughs> huh. I learned something today. No, that... Cause, cause yeah, everybody and their brother was, was, was doing that at first. So like, mm -hmm. but, but from what I understand, you, uh, you'd given me a couple of, of, of notes, uh, uh, during the last week, 
So mm-hmm. you you apparently ran into some problems with that though. Like, what was that about? I mean, Crux and I earlier were, were just bringing this up of you know if if Crux went to the the bread baking phase of the pandemic and did you? <laughs> no, I mean I made cornbread, but I made cornbread before the pandemic. Mm-hmm. So yeah. But I think and, and a lot I, of it. I just had flour on hand because mm-hmm. I had flour on hand. But... Yeah, but if you wanted to bake bread, like you, you couldn't get the ingredients. You couldn't, yeah, I couldn't buy get yeast. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that yeah. that was out. Uh, you couldn't you buy could... flour for a long while. Yeah. Flour was out mm-hmm. oh. because it it was just such a big deal. But yeah, I didn't get into the bread baking phase. Until later on, just simply because ingredients weren't available, which is really sad because I already used flour for like some deep frying stuff. And I just I had to live a, a somewhat healthy, non deep fried food life <laughs> until <laughs> ingredients came back. I, I know, you, you right? Kind of ping me. <laughs> I had flour. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this was early on. Everyone was was dangerous and I was a danger to everyone uh, else. I mean, it's it's still that way. Be yeah. Obviously, be very careful. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but well, now knowing well, I think who at that time, a lot of people the precautions were, that are were taking. doing the, mm-hmm. I'm going to go and drop something off on your porch. You know, yeah, to, the ding dong uh, ditch method was uh was absolutely amazing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Huh? Yeah, that's right for your sacrifice of fried food. Yes, fried I food. Know. You know, it is it is one of life's treasures. <laughs> Don't limit yourself if you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, you you gotta you gotta you gotta keep it right. I don't know. But uh, so I wonder. If, oh, that's what I was gonna say before. I wonder if it was the same thing with flour that we had, you know, with with toilet paper and pretty much everything else, where it was like you've got two different supply chains, right? One is for mm-hmm. restaurants and and you know, mm. you know people that manufacture food, and one that mm-hmm. was for the home user. Well, all of a mm-hmm. sudden, this completely went away. And all that demand, people still needed to eat. So all that yeah. demand fell onto the the residential flower supply or whatever, you know, like, because that's what happened with toilet paper. It, it was. I mean, it definitely could have been. I think everything in general was a bunch of people at home wanted ingredients. And yes. of course, yeah, supply couldn't keep up with it. Yeah. But on, on a somewhat related note to the toilet paper and mm-hmm. food, um, I I saw something online, whoever made this, comedic genius but i think they have it spot on you know why people were buying toilet paper it's because people were eating their own cooking for the first time <laughs> and now it all makes sense that's a pretty good point actually that's, <laughs> that's got to have something to do with it i don't know how much but that's got to have something to do with it oh that's funny so you you also mentioned about amish friendship bread yes so, so- yeah I would say that is what what started getting me into the bread baking phase of yeah. the pandemic, not because I willingly wanted to enter it. I was like, everyone's doing this. I don't I don't want to do it. I can't get ingredients. Screw it. Um, but then I was gifted a starter kind of like, you know, like a sourdough starter or starter for a bread, which mm-hmm. is basically um, just just some yeast that was mixed in with some other ingredients like the sugar it needs to like multiply. So you've got like live yeast that's growing, so you don't need to add yeast. It's it's in the uh, the mix. So you just have a starter that you can keep feeding with like sugar and stuff to keep multiplying. Mm. But you, so I got gifted a starter of Amish friendship bread, which I had never heard of before. Apparently, it was a a big deal, you know, at various points in history. But it is the chain letter of friendship bread. Yeah. So so <laughs> break this down for me, because so. Mm-hmm. So all friendship <laughs> bread comes from other friendship bread. Is that? Yeah. So the the way that someone someone makes a batch of of Amish friendship bread starter, mm-hmm. and then that the that's the uh from what I understand is that is the point of the friendship in the name is you you make the starter you know you you multiply it and now you can separate it out into like four bags and you go to your neighbors and you tell them hey here's the starter for this bread, follow the instructions and, you know, multiply it, you bake your bread and you give starter to four more people. Mm, okay. <laughs> and so, I mean, so one of our. Sourdough is kind of the same way. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you yeah. can make starter. Mm-hmm. You don't have yeah. to get it from someone. Yeah. You can, yeah. you can okay. definitely make it. Okay. That but was the I... thing that was in my head. Cause I, cause I had thought, and I got, I mm-hmm. obviously have this wrong mm-hmm. just, just for the people watching at home. 
I, I mostly eat things out of a bag that strangers put on my doorstep <laughs> after I do things on my phone. That's that's my extent of most of this. But um, so you know, I don't know what I'm talking about. But the uh, uh, when I uh, when I first heard of the whole thing, I thought all bread came from someone at some point making starter bread, and it all had to come from there. I didn't think you could make starter for some reason. But <laughs> anyway, I sorry. mean, there's there's a lot of you know, I'm I'm no expert. I'm just you know a home cook that that during being inside decided like, hey, I want to try some some new stuff and maybe mm -hmm. get better at cooking. But I think there's there's a lot of you'll see online that people be like, oh, you know, we've been taking care of the starter since like my my great grandfather and just, you know, keep replenishing. Yeah, it's because it, yeah. you 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 feed it with with the ingredient that it needs to thrive, which is usually like a sugar, or like a milk or whatever yeah. it is. And, and by the way, the Amish friendship bread is is like a sweet bread and it's quite delicious. Oh, that does sound good. Yeah. Like a sourdough starter, like. You don't mm -hmm. really even need anything. You just need like some flour and the yeast that's just in the air mm. will kind of start that one. But, mm -hmm. Which I yeah, guess I'm is kind personally... of gross if you think about it. But... Yeah. <laughs> well, th when when I got the friendship bread too, I was like, are you sure these this is right? Because I think you have to add, a, you add the flour, you add sugar, but you also ha add milk and you mix all those up, but you leave it on, out on the countertop. You don't refrigerate it. And I'm just like, but there's milk in here and this makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's, it's, I guess that's also part of the, the Amishness of it is like, you can, you can just have it readily, readily available anywhere. Huh. It's pretty easy to, to keep alive. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. But if you want to, if you want to attempt the chain letter of baking, Amish French bread. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, we'll see. I've, I've recently dipped my toe into, into cooking, but <laughs> it's just slow cooker ribs. And like, like when, when I discovered like, oh, wait a minute, all I need to do to make really good ribs is ribs and barbecue sauce and Coca-Cola. I'm, I'm, and, I'm into this. And exactly. That's, that's all that I feel like cooking is. I know once I've gotten like, I, I definitely enjoy like, making food look really pretty and like presenting it. But a lot of it is just very simple cooking. It's I, I absolutely love when I can microwave a potato and put some like butter cheese and sour cream on that with some seasonings. But mm. it's, it's just finding something that works with, you know, how much effort you want to put into it that you are willing to eat. It yeah. doesn't have to be complicated. Mm. And by the way, these, these pictures that we've got, mm -hmm. uh, as, as B roll here, but as, as, uh, hey. You know, we got background. my Amish friendship bread, which I made like a streusel topping to go on top. So it was extra crispity and streusel. delicious. <laughs> I have no idea what a streusel is, but, but there's, there is one. It's, it's basically delicious. sugar and butter. So it's just oh. the, <laughs> it's not great for you, but it's great for you. I mean, you had me at sugar, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> wow. wow you'll, this... you'll see it on like muffins and stuff. So I don't know if it's, if it's you're really good at, at cooking or you're really good at, at at photography or both, but but it's at least one of those. That looks amazing. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, t oh, uh, t -t 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 -t. Spamzilla says I always geek out on the science of baking. Yeah, that's kind of kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. Uh, that it's 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 really at the end of the day, it's just chemistry is what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's following directions. Uh, yeah. Titan says I picked up a, a pizza stone over quarantine. I had never really made pizza before. Uh, but it became an easy meal. Huh. Mm -hmm. right. oh, yeah. Pizza stones are great. Uh, I guess they help give you like a hotter, a crispier crust, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For for me, um, pizza has been like the the bane of my existence. So if we're if we would like to go into the pizza store, I think this this falls into to bread baking still. Sure, go for it. Because, you know, we, we got into like, okay, we've, we've moved into the bread baking phase and naturally. Um, so, so me and me and my partner, he wanted to make pizza. He loves pizza. And so we are going to go out on this venture to learn how to make pizza dough mm -hmm. and, you know, letting it, you know, letting it sit and rise. And, uh, I think we followed a recipe that, you know, you can leave it in the fridge for like, you know, a week or so to kind of like age and like ferment and get a nice, nice pizza dough. Yeah. And it's a lot of work getting getting like a a dough that that requires like so much attention. It's mm -hmm. a lot of work, expectations, 
really high, you know, we like made our own sauce to like our taste, got all the toppings we like, made a nice bread, heat up the oven to, you know, as high as we can get it, like made, made it look, look beautiful. And it was so disappointing. Oh, what happened? <laughs> and, and well, one, I don't think our, our dough rose nearly as much as we wanted it to like the technique of like trying to st stretch it out into like, um, stretch it out into like the, the circular pizza shape, I think like flattened a bunch of the bubbles that we've spent trying to rise it over the last couple of days. Uh -huh. Um, but also I've, I've decided that while well, I don't have a pizza stone, everyone tells me about the pizza stone, but also a home oven doesn't get as hot as a, a pizza oven is going to be. And right. while a pizza stone, like, yeah, you can, you can hold a lot of temperature for a lot of time. Like, I've I've been at people's houses with their pizza stone and it's never as good as I want it to be. If I'm yeah. cooking stuff at home, most of the time I'm I'm aiming for like trying to make it better than I would get at a restaurant because I can customize it to my taste. Yeah. And I'm I'm convinced that pizza is something that I should never make at home because I don't have a pizza oven. I'm never gonna make it to my expectations. So, but oh go ahead. There, yeah, but there's a but because crux taught me a different way to make a pizza. Oh. And it is like the, That's the, the most, super lazy. Yeah, the super lazy <laughs> shortcut. Like this, this is a dumb idea. It's never going to work. Yeah. And, then and it it's works. making, yeah. And then it's making a pizza on a tortilla. <laughs> so instead of making dough, you know, you oil up a tortilla, you put your, your, your sauce, your, your cheese, your toppings on that throw it in the oven for 10 minutes mm -hmm. and you've got a really, really thin crust, crispy pizza that had zero effort. My expectations were on the floor, <laughs> but it's so, so far surpassed that expectation. Like it's definitely no substitute for like, if you're going to go and buy a really nice pizza, uh -huh. but for the expectation and for the effort of making like a, a bare bones, like attempt at a pizza. Yeah. It is amazing. It satisfies every need that I will ever have <laughs> for home yeah. pizza. So. Yeah, the, the trick is you need to put it like I have a pizza steel as well. And, and I'll just I put it on the steel ahead of time because transporting a tortilla, which doesn't really have any substance, it, it's you're just going to have a bad time with, with that. Uh, oh, so cool. it's better just to make it in place and then put the steel in the oven. Wow. OK. Yeah, I had never heard of that. That sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> I, oh, I think I don't know if he's still in the chat or not, but Zenify was 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 here earlier. He he and I are the only two people that I know of that have fallen in love with the pizza the pizzazz. It's pizzazz? Uh, it's like pizza with like three Z's at the end of it. But basically, well, what it is is it's a rotating metal plate where you put the pizza, and it like travels underneath a heating element. And you can oh, okay. and you can like raise or lower the top and the bottom. So it like cooks once per revolution and then kind of cools down and heats up and cools down. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but it's really good. <laughs> it cooks the pizza really fast and it's huh. it's flaky but not like burned. I okay. mean, obviously it's possible to burn it, don't get me wrong. But mm -hmm. like like any pizza, you know, like like if I get like a really thin St. Louis style pizza or if mm -hmm. I get a, a, a thick crust pizza, something like that, either or um it it works it's the witchcraft the the <laughs> other one that was really good that uh <laughs> when we went camping uh oh um, yeah we basically <laughs> heated up a, a cast iron skillet is mm -hmm. you know, okay you, you want me to explain the uh the yeah, camping you, you go ahead and explain it okay so so we had a uh, we went camping um a ho halloween night actually we we're like i I love Halloween. Uh, if you can't tell from the costumes in the background, even though we're talking about food, love Halloween. But also <laughs> during a pandemic, I was like, oh, man, I'm not going to be able to hang out with people. Yeah. So I'm just going to go away and go camping. Um, and so we ended up going camping. And one of the the foods that everyone was was interested in was was trying to make a pizza in a cast iron. And so what I ended up buying is at the grocery store, there was just like a, a packet of just to add water pizza dough, you know, low, oh. low expectations here. We're right. camping. And if we get anything close to a pizza, it's going to be great. <laughs> but we, of course, waited until the absolute last minute and didn't get to try it at home. So either we were going to get a great pizza or we were just going to like snack on chips for that night. Right. 
Um, but yeah, so we, we have a just sad water like pizza dough and we and ended up being a pretty decent dough. Um, but we put that in the cast iron, started like putting our toppings, which I just like pre-cut in containers. Um, but the issue was, okay, how are we going to brown the top of it? Like our cast iron, we didn't have like a lid or anything. We couldn't have fires. We do live in Las Vegas and it was, it, everything was very dry and, yeah. you know, fires were not allowed. You don't want to than, be like, that guy. Oh, yeah. Like propane, <laughs> propane fire. So we didn't have, like, we couldn't do like a proper throw, throw the Dutch oven into the fire and let it bake. Mm. Um, so of course, as, as the makers that we are, uh, we had a flamethrower. <laughs> <laughs> huh? yeah, so I, I uh for doing sous vide i have a, a sears all mm. which takes a propane a flame <laughs> and spreads it out and and that actually worked really really well on the on the pizza it's a good thing you didn't have an open fire because that would be dangerous <laughs> no no it is a very controlled it is a cooking <laughs> like a searing device oh. but you know it how fun did it feel to hold the tool <laughs> with with a little like gas attachment just shooting out flames that and searing the, awesome. the top of your pizza and melting all the cheese? Yeah, yeah, I can't. Mm -hmm. uh, I certainly can't complain about that one. That that does sound mm -hmm. sound fantastic. Yeah, yeah but I think when we had no expectations and and it turned out really good. So yeah, so we'd probably awesome. do that again. Yeah. But I think that's something I would have never been able to do if I didn't attempt to do some cooking. Because at this point, I, I feel a lot more comfortable just kind of like improving recipes mm. in the sense of of like I, I know what ingredients and what flavors that I want for something like we all, all know what pizza is. You, you get some dough, you have sauce, you have cheese, you have toppings mm -hmm. and it's OK. Well, what do I need to do? I need to cook the dough through. What can I do that with? Yeah. And so it's a lot of just, you know, figuring out within what tools you have to make it happen oh wow <laughs> we need help <laughs> oh you're talking about like uh uh no, that that's a in joke <laughs> okay yeah, yeah. That, that's the story i i believe we told that story sometime in another yeah. episode so if, if you read through all the episodes you might get the camping story of how how hopelessly lost we were <laughs> <laughs> so uh one thing that uh I was going to make a really stupid segue, like a, a twist or something like that. But, but one thing I saw uh, in your notes here is making pretzels. How in the world do you make pretzels? That, that right. Like I didn't think that making like a nice, like big, soft, soft pretzel, like was something that I was going to be able to do at home. It is, they are delicious. They go great with sausages. Um, so, so at the tail end of our, uh, of our bread baking phase, mm -hmm. um, when we were able to get yeast and flour and just, you know, start experimenting with stuff that we were like, this is crazy. You know, we're not going to be able to do this. We need to try it. Yeah. Um, we decided we wanted to make pretzels and this was, this was after our, our pizza baking, you know, we, we, we made dough, we let it sit, we let it rise, you know, like three hours later, yeah. we, we had pretzels and they were pretty good. But I was never going to do that again until I found like a 30 minute pretzel recipe where you don't got to wait for for anything. You just mix the ingredients. And by the time you you get everything rolling, you can have pretzels in about a half hour. OK, OK, wait a minute. I find your ideas intriguing and would like to subscribe yes. to your newsletter. But <laughs> just so I know what yeah, is the, you'll, the you'll have to show me. How I, to I, I'm going to go through a little bit more detail about that. <laughs> OK, cool. But so, but like just just so I understand mm -hmm. like the backstory, though, like like mm -hmm. the. Uh, just, just so I understand the before, what mm -hmm. would you normally have to do to make pretzels? So, yeah, so the the method of making pretzels, the pre making pretzels is what saved me from like from actually just never deciding to make bread products ever again. Okay. Because uh, my my issue with the pizza, my issue with like the first batch of pretzels was it took too long. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of waiting, a lot of you know rising, a lot of you know making sure the cats don't like anything. Um, very important. But the, the method of making pretzels is, you know, you make a simple dough. I, if, if you do want to make this, if people are listening, I'm pretty sure the recipe I use is a 30 minute soft pretzels from a website called like Sally's baking addiction. But it's a, you, you make your simple pretzel dough. Um, you, you roll it out and you make a pretzel shape. I'm sure there are YouTube videos that can describe that better than I can in audio. But the thing that makes some pretzels is that like really taut, like glossy skin at the top. Yeah. And if you if you make normal bread, you're not going to get that. Like what what makes that glossy skin? And it's boiling them 
Really? So, so what you do is you'll, you'll make your, your dough and you'll make them pretzel shapes and a, it was, the link was found, but yeah, so you boil them usually in like a, a solution with, um, some baking, baking soda. Okay. So you, you just boil them for about like 15 to 30 seconds. And that's just enough to like cook the tops of them and, and make it, um, make it like a solid glossy sheet. And then you finish them off in the oven and then, you know, broil them to, to make them nice and dark. Mm -hmm. But because the tops are already like set, once you, once you bake them and let the inside rise and puff, the tops will stay nice and taut. And, you know, you'll have those like cracks and like pretzel seams where you see like the light color coming through, mm. but, but it's super easy. Oh, and sounds... I've paid, I know. And I've paid like, to like what feels like $20 at like fairs to get like a soft pretzel. <laughs> Absolutely. No, that that and some nacho cheese, and we're 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 good to go. Mm -hmm. But uh, but so wait, I guess to my question earlier though, like like how long does that take normally to do? The first time that I made it, I I think it was like a two and a half hour process. Uh, Granted, yeah. it wasn't all like hands on time. Right. It was you know you you make the dough and you cover the bowl and let the dough rise. Yeah. And now you open that, you take that out, you form everything, you cover that, you let it rise. Yeah. And ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah. But this recipe here only needs to rest mm -hmm. for 10 minutes. That's so, that's crazy. So you mix it. Oh my mm -hmm. God, it looks delicious. Yeah. I would definitely recommend trying it. I, I am someone that thought bread baking was really hard and yeah. not worth the effort and making pretzels is, is what, uh, what saved that for me. <laughs> wow. Okay, man. Tonight, tonight's show is news you can use right here. Like this is, <laughs> hey, there this you is, go. <laughs> this is helpful stuff right here. I'm, I'm, I probably am going to, going to go ahead and make this. You know what I should do? I should actually post my, uh, the ribs that I found. Yeah, I'm not really there you talking go. Talking about ribs right now, but, uh, it was, uh, yeah, there we go. It was like the, the first link that I found, and it was, it's from the Frugal Girls. Hey, um, there. You whatever the frugal girls make good ribs All, so although can we talk about how how recipe websites like all have <laughs> have like all all the pop-ups and all of like the blog before you get to the right. recipe yeah no. so if i find a good recipe oh, like yeah. i'm just going to like save it <laughs> yeah yeah i'll usually put it in a google doc print them out and save them somewhere <laughs> so i have mm -hmm. a thing on my fridge with like all the things i've made mm-hmm hmm. Now, one thing that uh, that we do absolutely have to save is the top of the hour, where I uh, <laughs> where I remind everybody that this uh, this show is brought to you on behalf of the Sin Shop uh, Makerspace in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, and uh, we're currently in the middle of renovating. If you'd like to come and help us with that renovation, we would certainly love to have your help. Uh, you can head on over to sinshop.org forward slash Discord uh, to join our Discord and learn more about how you can help. Uh, we're here talking with Forge, uh, who is a, a longtime member of the shop, frequent uh, returning champion of the Sin Shop podcast. And uh, and she's telling us all about some food and man, I'm hungry. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm happy to help. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I'm, I'm so making pretzels. I gotta do it now. That's because I love, I love soft pretzels. But like, mm -hmm. I never order them. Like, like uh, uh, who is that? Red Robin has some decent ones. But I never oh. order them because it's like you're going to spend like eight bucks mm -hmm. for something that you're already going to be full by the time it's time to eat. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, like, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, pretzels I, I, with... <laughs> I get like the pretzels at the Hofbra house. You know, that's mm. good times. But... Oh, that does sound delicious. Yeah, Hoffer yeah. House was definitely our inspiration for for wanting pretzels. We we wanted the, uh, I think it was during DEF CON probably. It's our, our typical thing is, you know, we'll... We'll go eat some uh, some pretzels and, and beer and stuff. We're like, we want sausages and pretzels, and we can't go get that right now. How do we make mm. that happen? My, so. my my German heart is just, <laughs> just skipping a beat everywhere. We got beer, sausages, pretzels. Mm. Yum, yum, yum. But right, yeah, so. following recipe is surprisingly easy. If you if you manage to do some cooking, then you know my my job has been all all worth it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right, all right. Well, so yeah, that, that is one of the cool things, and you mentioned earlier about about, you know, that, that this is a maker thing, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just basically like handing down lessons you learned from, you know, like I made this horrible mistake. Here's how you can avoid making that same exact mistake, right? Because mm -hmm. you had yeah. mentioned uh, like you used to, <laughs> this is my favorite one. I used to treat well, vegetables like crap. How did you treat yeah. vegetables poorly? 
because no one likes vegetables <laughs> everyone treats vegetables so poorly so point. so uh a good number of years ago i used to be a vegetarian for for six years i used to wow. be a vegetarian for a while and i uh I hated going to eat with people because the vegetarian option was always like, here are like some, some like a boiled unseasoned vegetables, you know, mm -hmm. just like skilleted together and like filled with bell peppers. I don't like bell peppers. It was the filler for everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and so like, of course, when, when like vegetables are, are not treated like you treat other food, mm -hmm. no one's going to eat them. There's, you know, we already mm -hmm. know that, you know, kids don't like eating their vegetables. My boyfriend doesn't like eating his vegetables. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've gone a, the, the quarter decade of my life not knowing how to roast stuff in the oven. Hmm. Roast anything, anything's going to taste amazing. Really? Um, I Yeah, I go with like the philosophy of like, all right, if you want like your any food to taste good, you're going to treat it like for most people that's meat. People treat meat with a lot of care as like the staple protein in their, their meals Yeah, is you, you cook it, you have like nice browning and like that caramelized well, flavor on it. You start the night before with the marinade, <laughs> right? I mean, but even so, but, even yeah, if you're right. doing something immediately, like you're, you're putting seasonings on it, you know, you're, you're giving it like a, a nice, like crust and char. And that's what roasting vegetables does is you have, you're bringing out all the flavors, but also adding adding that spice that like salt, garlic and onion on everything. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Or, you know, the other thing you find is like people will like over overcook vegetables. Like mm. broccoli should have a sweet flavor to it. And if you overcook it, you just destroy it and you just get this like ugly green brownish thing that's no longer broccoli in my opinion. I'm horrible at that. I was gonna I'd say really I, I like... probably overcook broccoli to Crux's standards, but I also like the flavor that I'm going for is usually like a very like garlicky, and I'll throw cayenne pepper and stuff on there. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, yeah, the, yeah I, the vegetables should be like bright in color. Uh, hmm. Yeah, there's a point. Yeah, you can you can get mm -hmm. to a like nice sweet spot though, where it's not. Mm -hmm. cr I don't like it when it's crunchy. But mm -hmm. I get what you're saying too. You don't yeah. want to cook the ever loving snot out of it. There's a there's yeah. a little tiny thing in the middle that, mm -hmm. that you can have both. Um, when I was when I was younger, I you know growing up in the Midwest, like I didn't understand the concept <laughs> of a meal without meat. Like that just didn't even mm, oh, yep. for me. And then uh, at one event that I was at, uh, someone was making portobello mush mm. uh, portobello mushroom sandwiches. And I was like, sure, I'll try it. I'm starving hungry and there's not no food for miles. It was an outdoor festival. So yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Sure. Why not? I'll try a portobello <laughs> mushroom sandwich. Why not? Oh, yeah. my God, it was so good. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Like it was like steak. I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was mm -hmm. like, oh my God. Yeah. I, I went through a phase where I was, I was cooking those quite a bit during the pandemic. So. Really? Oh, I love them so much. So In good. fact, I think I made one, I made one, uh, when we were camping. So. Hey. <laughs> so for 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 those of us who are who are you know wrench twisters by trade, uh, you know Spamzilla in, in in the chat was agreeing that roasting is the best for veggies. It what, really is. What is the difference between roasting and you know baking or broiling? What's what's the difference? Not boiling. Um, but broiling. With an R. Um, I mean, I I'm not so sure. I don't know Could what the, like the technicality the of, of the term is. Like, yeah, I think roasting, doing it like kind of like with pizza where it's it's hotter but quicker. I know the broil function on the oven is just, you know, hitting usually like hitting the tops just to color it. Mm. Um, but usually like I'm roasting stuff in the oven and it'll it'll be there at like a certain temperature for like a half hour to an hour. But like I'm I'm cooking the vegetable all the way through. It's not oh, like I pre-cooked it. And oh, there we go. Broiling Let's is see. higher temperature, closer to the heat source. Mm -hmm. Okay. Today. So I will usually hit when I do the pretzels, I will usually hit those with a broil for five minutes just to like add color to the top. But it's it's just like surface level. It's not cooking stuff all the way through. So if I'm making like carrots, I'm going to have to cook those for a while just because they're they're pretty hard. But <laughs> yeah. But overall, just getting some like some actual like cook and, and browning and like flavor like browning browning like when you're searing steaks or something that mm -hmm. that adds a lot of flavor that certain reaction of cooking yeah. adds a lot of flavor Absolutely. but it's 
it, it's like, would you rather have like an unseasoned, like boiled chicken, or would you actually have like a grilled chicken with seasoning on it? It's, it's the same with vegetables. If you don't treat them like food, you're going to want to eat. You're not going to want to eat them. That makes a put, lot of sense. Yeah. But put some seasonings and some butter on it and you're good. Yeah. <laughs> throw some cheese on it. Throw some cheese on vegetables. You're good. <laughs> God, I'm so <laughs> One of the things I tried just randomly that ended up being really good is I was making uh, uh, broccoli and I threw some mustard on it and that was like amazing. Oh, yeah. nice. We recently threw some uh, some gravy on uh, on some broccoli and that was really good too. Huh? Brown gravy? Yeah, brown gravy. Brown gravy? Huh? Neat. Yeah. Hmm. Brown gravy that I made out of drippings that I had from. Uh, from like some steak and pork and stuff that I made. Huh. Resourceful. So, so you also, you had mentioned using nonstick pans correctly. That's a thing that, that, that I definitely struggle with. Like, yes. So, so I've, I've cooked at various points throughout my life, but it's not until like recently that I've, I've been pretty confident and feel like, okay, like I actually feel comfortable cooking now like i would feel comfortable like cooking for someone else i feel like i got a lot of like techniques down yeah um just in the matter of like i've looked up especially youtube youtube is a great source for people teaching you how to do things um but non-stick pans i i thought non-stick pans were were a scam i thought they never worked i didn't understand how these people on these videos were having like these perfect like eggs that would just swirl around yeah. on their pan with no oil yeah um until i decided to uh to get myself a nice non-stick pan okay and uh and read the instructions in the manual <laughs> oh it's come to that huh Oof. yeah well i i knew that that um certain things i have learned that i did not previously learned um like never use metal in a non-stick pan i learned that mm. you know a good while ago Mm -hmm. But there was a point in my life I didn't know that. Um, and Ooh. so using that metal on a nonstick pan, like the, the Teflon coating is is not very strong. No. And it's also not good for you if you start scratching it and eating stuff on it. If you scratch it, like that pan is dead. Don't use it. Yep. Um, I have had a pan that was gifted to me from my mom that was scratched all over and I probably got all the cancers. Don't use it. Um, so many cancers. Yeah, but I think one not not using metal. Yeah. Um, but I think the biggest one that that I didn't realize because even though I knew like not to scratch it up, I was still having so many issues. And my the instructions for the the pan that I bought said not to overheat it. And one of the things that I would do all the time is you know for a little while I'd turn it up all the way just to like get the pan hot and mm -hmm. then turn it back down. Apparently that destroys the coating, and I had no idea. Really. And so I was not having any luck just getting anything to like not stick, not with oil, not with butter. Right. And it's because I was destroying the the pan before I even got to use it. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Okay. That also, we, we now like exclusively hand wash this pan because it's magical. Like we don't know how it works. We don't want to ruin it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you, uh, if you mistreat your pans, then, then they, they suddenly will just always <laughs> stick. Because you know that they mm -hmm. you've scratched it or ruin it. Mm -hmm. uh, the ceramic uh, pans actually work pretty well too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they're yeah. another one that yeah. you know if you mistreat them, then you're gonna have problems. Yeah. Also, but if you want a pan that uh, that's gonna be kind of nonstick, but also you can use metal and learn how to use cast iron. <laughs> oh, there, yeah. there there are pans and you tools that work for a bunch of different different people. It depends on what you cook, how you like to cook research <laughs> what's, the, what's the deal with with cast iron pans because I, I i for a while there was like a whole bunch of posts oh cast iron's the only way to go yada 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 and i'm like oh. i mean cast iron does kind of have a cult following yeah. i am not great at using them i understand the uh you know you have to season them which is really just applying like oil and baking it on in a way so that that oil provides like a non-stick surface mm -hmm. um but I think the the big appeal of nonstick pans is they're like big, durable, solid pieces of metal, and they are going to last your lifetime and many lifetimes. Yeah. You can always, you know, apply your new nonstick oil coating. Um, but there there is a lot of debate back and forth of you know what are good ways to wash it? How do you take care of it? We we use like a little um, chain mail scrubber to actually scrub it off of there. We don't use like hmm. 
Yeah. But that is that is a whole rabbit hole that that can be gone down via more intelligent people on the YouTube. <laughs> OK. All right. Oh, so uh, speaking of more intelligent people uh, than than myself, at least. Uh, so Spamzilla is asking uh, any tips for someone that has no idea what they're doing cooking. I can follow a recipe, but how do you put together a meal from what you have? That is the dark arts. How, how yeah. does one do that? I, I've gotten really, really proud of my uh, my cooking because now I feel like I don't let a lot of stuff go to waste because I can take a look at what I have in my fridge and like, okay, I've got ideas of how to put this together. Mm -hmm. um, because I think a lot of like, especially in my, my early wants of cooking, it's I want to make this one thing. So I'm going to go to the store and I'm going to buy, you know, all 20 ingredients that this needs, use it for one thing. And now I've got a bunch of stuff sitting that I'm never going to touch again. Mm -hmm. That's going to get wasted. Um, I think that learning how to put together a meal based on the ingredients that you have available is one, it, it is going to take a little bit of experimentation. You're going to make some mistakes, mm -hmm. um, but learning what your, your taste preferences are. I think a lot of us can understand that like we can go to like a, a sandwich store or something, you know, the generic non, non brand name Suabwe and and tell <laughs> tell the person what, what ingredients we want together. I think a lot of us understand what ingredients that we like together. Okay. Um, and so I think that's step one, figuring out what flavors that you like. Mm -hmm. um, but the next step is okay, what what techniques do I have to put that together? And you know, if if you have the technique of like I can skillet something on a pan, um, you can make a bunch of like skillet meals, but if you have the techniques of baking, it's it's going to be really difficult to like explain a specific um, specific way to like make something right now without knowing what the ingredients are. Mm -hmm. It's it's really trial and error of I I know what flavors I like and I know what techniques I can use. How can I put these together? Yeah, like experimentation is like well mm -hmm. I have this thing and. There's this thing in the fridge. I wonder if that would be good yeah. on there. It's, it sounds like it might be good. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Let's try it. Yeah, it's it's building and, and off. Sometimes, the sometimes <laughs> it's you're, you're throwing that food away because you've destroyed it, and and. But you learn something pizza. from that. But, but you <laughs> learn something. Yeah. Man, I have had some food fails. I have had some food fails that kept me from cooking for years. The like, real gift is the friends you made along the way. Oh well, it definitely wasn't my pancakes. That's for sure. <laughs> Good grief. I'll, t I'll talk about that in the, in the post. Game. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, but I, I think overall it's, it's a building game. It's like, okay, I know how to make eggs. All right. I have eggs and I have some, some tomatoes in my fridge. I can put those together. Oh, you know, I have, I have eggs and, and pancake mix. I know these are going to be terrible, so I'm not going to do those. Mm. So, so l little things you learn that something works one time. Okay. Can I add something to that? The, the eggs and tomatoes work great. Maybe some cheese on top of that. Mm. Yeah, uh, really cool. stir fry is a, a great food to <laughs> you can do a lot of experimenting with because you can just like add things to it. Huh. Oh, uh, uh, Spamzilla says uh, that's a really cool perspective and process for breaking it all down. That's hey, awesome. I'm glad I could help. <laughs> yeah. look, at, look at this. Look at this. News you can use right here on the Thin Shot podcast. So, uh, so here's another thing I'd. Oh, wait, no, I, I'm, I'm missing stuff here uh do, 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 how to efficiently use my dishwasher how in the world were you doing it wrong <laughs> it's a big drying rack right <laughs> see see that that's the way i was raised i was it was the hand washing everything all the time um one of the things that that kept me from cooking and i know uh some other people that i know that don't don't necessarily like to cook is because they also don't like doing dishes. I absolutely hate dishes. I will do everything in my power to not do dishes. I will hide upstairs until Michael comes home and he sees the dishes. Yep. I don't like doing dishes. Okay. Um, and especially since uh, since we got our cats uh, who like to lick stuff that's left in the sink. Um, I've really had to abandon the like, OK, everything's got to be hand washed. This is how I grew up, you know. Um, I, I really had to like abandon that and I started trying to use the dishwasher and the dishwasher, you know, it, it does its job. You put the stuff in there and you wash it, but we kept having issues of like, you know, certain stuff just wouldn't get as clean or, you know, mm -hmm. we'd have to like take out the little like strain filter, like all the time. We were like, why isn't this working? Like we, we assume it's supposed to work. Mm -hmm. Um, and 
shout out to a wonderful YouTube channel called Technology Connections not too long ago. I love that show. Yeah, they they put a, a video about dishwashers. Um, and not necessarily dishwashers, dishwasher pods. Okay. We, we use we use those dishwasher pods. Huh. And no, we recently <laughs> I mean they, they do the job, they're easy, they're pre-portioned. I mean say say what you want, but they 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 were what we were using. Um <laughs> But the idea of like the dishwasher pod um, is like that little flap in your dishwasher is released at a certain point to be efficient because it dumps in water, it rinses it all up, it drains that, and then it puts in clean water and then puts that soap and rinses it all up. Um, and so during like the initial washes, it's supposed to have some soap and the dishwasher pod doesn't do that. It just gives it all in one go. But mm. most dishwashers have two little spots for soap because you can give it soap earlier on. We had a, uh, actually, if we uh, if we reference a uh, way to go, Mike in the uh, in the chat, um, not not too long ago, he was he was you know giving giving me shit for for not rinsing my dishes before they go into the dishwasher, mm -hmm. um, and I I I think. Um, after learning that I could put some soap in the initial bit of the wash, you know, like the dishwasher tells you, again, we mm -hmm. go back to the, uh, <laughs> to the nonstick pan, reading the instructions, or at least knowing how things want you to do, mm -hmm. do it. Like the dishwasher that has two sections for soap. Yeah. Um, it, it does amazing jobs just with that one little change. Huh. So you don't have to rinse it, rinse before anyway. No, or, I mean, I, yeah, I don't, uh, as long as it's something that I know is going to dissolve, like a sauce or something, like I'm definitely not going to leave like big chunks of like bread or like crumbs. But mm -hmm. yeah, and you don't want to leave mm -hmm. your dishes to just dry out with whatever it is that's on oh, there because then it's not going to. No, gonna I disagree. I disagree. Yeah. I, oh. <laughs> I I have left like pans of of like sticky mac and cheese. And that have you know dried and and caked on, and you've got the sauce on there, and mm -hmm. the dishwasher will do it. Our dishwasher is ancient. We are renting this house that was built in like the seventies, and it does an amazing job as long as you just <laughs> use the dishwasher like it told you to. Huh. Yeah, and I think one more uh, one more trick from from the uh, the internet. I think the the video also touched on it, the technology connections video. Um, but you can also run your water from the sink to make it hot before you start a dishwasher load, which yeah. again, just, it, it makes it so much more efficient and I don't have to scrub anything and I can now like prep ingredients in different bowls and not be upset that I've got so many more dishes and so many more pots and pans to clean. <laughs> Man, that makes so much sense. Yeah, no, cause our house is like that. I don't know why, <laughs> because we're only like 30, if it's 30 feet, I'd be surprised. It's more like 20 <laughs> feet from the hot water heater to mm. pretty much anything like, you know, the, the, the kitchen or the bathroom. And you, it takes forever to, for the hot water to get through there. So mm -hmm. that makes total sense. You're like most of your hot cycle in your, in your, uh, uh, dishwasher is already done by the time it's just starting to get hot water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes <laughs> yeah. I got my, my upstairs bathroom is like at the very end of the chain and it will take forever to get mm -hmm. hot. Yeah, I actually, I actually took apart the faucet and made it so more water could mm -hmm. flow through the little uh, filter thing. Yeah, and that actually helped a lot because you were just cycling through the water with quicker. Dumping out water. Otherwise, yeah. you, yeah, the water would be running for like five minutes and you still wouldn't have hot water. So. <laughs> yeah. But we have in the chat, we have way to go, Mike. Still, still saying that he's right, and that's fine. If you want to hand wash your dishes, great. But if you want to use your dishwasher, you can hack your dishwasher, you know, by using it correctly and maybe running some hot water to make it work. Yeah, I do a mixture. <laughs> um, I prefer to hand wash like silverware just because I think it mm. doing that does a better job. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've had I followed the exact instructions and had things where they didn't didn't uh, get mm -hmm. clean. Yeah. Uh, but other stuff, I'll just rinse off real quick and throw it in there just so if I forget about it, it's not an issue and use that. But a lot of times I just do the dishes by hand because I like doing them by hand. But. Yeah. Overall, it's it, uh, the theme of tonight is, is do what works for you. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. There, there's a lot of like not not a right way to do it unless you're like undercooking meat to like an unsafe level. Like it is it is a lot of preference. That is that is all cooking is. It's it's making something to your yeah. preference. Unless yeah. you're making steaks well done and then you're wrong. It yes. <laughs> I still gotta try that. Oh, I forgot all about that. <laughs> oh no, he wants to try the steak with ketchup. <laughs> I, I do. I do. Just once. I mean he's gone now, so you know, whatever. <laughs> I want to. I want to try it. Well, I'll wait until I can actually go out mm -hmm. and and like go to a place. And no, I don't want to do that. They're gonna spit my. <laughs> They're gonna spit in your food. No, I had heard somewhere that a uh, a, a a public figure, uh, who, <laughs> yeah, a public figure. I'll leave it at that. Uh, <laughs> like to eat steaks well done with ketchup on them. Which sounds sacrilegious, like just the <laughs> worst thing ever. Are they like that with like a Diet Coke as well? Or I, oh, God. oh no, God. that's the only way I could possibly think to make that worse. But yeah, that that does it. It cool. seems sacrilegious, but you've mentioned before that because it exists, it like there has to be a reason. Exactly. No, so that's the okay. reason the, could be you know that person is just wrong. Oh, I'm sure he is about In almost every ways. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. No, so so the very first time I tried pork rinds, right? I knew what pork rinds were. They're the skin of pigs that they fry. And I'm like, I'm like, oh no, oh, that's terrible. But then I look and oh, every dude. single convenience store I'm in, there's a bag full of them right there. So they must be like so that requires infrastructure. And infrastructure requires money, and money requires people buying fried pig skin. So like it there has must to be, be a good. market. Yeah, yeah. So a large number of people mm. like eating fried pigskin. So, I, okay, fine, I'll try it. So, like, if that doofus likes eating, <laughs> like he likes eating a steak well done with ketchup, I, I just want to try it once. Just like, what, what I mean, is, we're all going to judge you. I, you know, I, and I, I deserve it. <laughs> that's fine. I, that's okay. I, shall I, mean, I be very judged. much support you going on your food journey and figuring out what you like. But you know, I I'm still gonna tell you that you're wrong. <laughs> Am I super heck invalid? <laughs> <laughs> Do you support me on my journey? That's, <laughs> that's very nice of you. So, no, I I got to No, I know I'm probably gonna not like it. But uh, now what? That would be really messed up. Is if I came away actually enjoying it. All oh, right. No. So there, yeah, well, there was one more thing. What's that? I don't think it's worth the risk. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, you're probably right, but I'm going to try it anyway. We'll see. Um, okay. So speaking of speaking of everybody, uh, that's what friends are for: supporting you in your journey and making fun making of you. Making fun of you. Time, yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yep. Oh, well, fair enough. If they don't make fun of you, are they really friends? <laughs> <laughs> uh so okay so uh, speaking of people so, having their knives out for you <laughs> oh there you go what you're gonna, a segue. Yeah. can i segue or what i can i can do some segue my when my steak falls into ketchup i throw it in the garbage look i'm not saying at all that this is the right way to eat steak it's not like, this ketchup is the, itself is just bad so. this is the food equivalent of sitting backwards on the toilet it's the wrong way to do it <laughs> But you've done it. <laughs> so, so there you go. <laughs> I know it's wrong. I feel like we're going to have to continue some controversial food opinions in the post game. Oh, together. absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> we are. Yeah. No, for real. Okay. So, uh, sharpening knives. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned using equipment that wrong. Using yep. we, Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's a good point. Using equipment wrong. <laughs> That, that's that been thing. a lot of my current like learning how to like relearning how to cook cooking better like being being decent at like feeding myself yeah is is not incorrectly using equipment yeah. learning how to use stuff and and finding stuff that has a good purpose um like if we revert back to pizza if you ever want reheated pizza throw that in a toaster oven it is amazing the microwaving pizza is sacrilegious I, I like a lot of things pizza. I mean, again, fine. you're wrong, but all right. <laughs> cold pizza is a good way to have it has the to same be a good meal. pizza. <laughs> What's that? It has to be a good pizza that you're having cold. Yeah. yeah. Cold, cold pizza is a way to have the same meal a different way with very minimal effort. Because it's like, it's kind of different when it's cold. 
And so, like, yeah. you know, it's kind of like you're getting two meals out of it, but not really, but kind of. Yeah. Uh, oh, Zinify <laughs> uh, says, skillet top, drops the water on the side, foil over top. Huh. Cool. Oh, okay. Drops water on the side, foil over Best way to reheat pizza. You you missed it earlier. <laughs> you were we were talking about uh, the pizzazz. I know that I know that the uh, the pizzazz. Yeah, will have to re-update us on that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, that's that's it, yeah. That, that makes a damn fine pizza. I have one. But but, but I digress. Using yes. using tools in in efficient ways, mm -hmm. which which the most important tool in in the kitchen to me is is a knife, because okay. I I'm also someone that like hates having having like equipment that does like one thing, mm -hmm. like you have your, your avocado slicer or <laughs> your, uh, like your individual like task items. Like, no, you can, you can just have a knife and do everything you need to do. Um, but when having a, having a dull knife, you, how are you going to cook with that? Uh, or you're going to just hurt yourself by like putting a bunch of force and now having all your weight on a knife that's going to now cut your finger. So having sharp knives mm -hmm. is good. Having good knives is not necessary. Mm. I have about like four four knives just because I don't like doing dishes very fast. Mm -hmm. And you know, in case I cut into like raw meat, and I'm just like, well, shoot, which knife was not was which? I'm gonna grab another knife. Mm. Um, but I have about four knives, and all of which are from like a dollar store. <laughs> they are not great knives. I I know a lot of people are really passionate about their knives, their chef knives, but I think is like a home cook. Getting mm -hmm. a nice knife is is kind of a waste. I like to treat my knives um, like absolute crap and throw them in the dishwasher and who cares what happens to them. Mm. But because I can sharpen them, I can cut through anything without a problem. Oh yeah, see there's my uh, my dollar fifty Daiso Japan knife. <laughs> I was trying to pause it and uh, it, <laughs> it just did not work. Let's see what we can do here. We'll we'll get that knife back. Yeah. Keep going. All right, but but yeah, overall it's it's I think a lot of people when it comes to cooking get overwhelmed with, you know, not having the equipment, um, not knowing where to start. And it's, I feel like it can be very, very simple. Like, again, I, I am no expert. I just cook enough to feed myself and have been mm -hmm. kind of trying to go on a, on a journey of figuring out what I like and how to do it better. Um, but I think starting really simple and understanding why you're using something, you're obviously using a knife to cut. You need a knife to be sharp. If, Everything other than that is is kind of just preference and irrelevant. It's not necessary. Like, hmm. sure, you can spend 150 bucks to find a knife that you know it feels really nice in your hand, is a nice and balanced. But you don't need that. Hmm. So, it, so once I've got my my <laughs> dollar store knife, how, <laughs> how does one sharpen correctly? Um, well, I have I have two ways of sharpening. I have one like. I bought it at a grocery store. It just sits on the table. It's got two like little metal blades and you just run your knife through it. That is mm. the easiest, quickest way. Um, if I feel like being really fancy, I, I have a, uh, a wet stone, like a, a sharpening stone that I soak in water and I can run the knife across it and get a nice angle on it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, Crux, is that what you do? You said you had a knife sharpening. Uh, I don't actually have a knife hmm. sharpening thing, so I wow. need to get one. You need to get one. Okay. Yeah, all I have is the... Uh, mm -hmm. The little, uh, I, don't, I forget, I don't know what it's called, but it's like the rod shaped thing that comes with like the knife set. Oh, like run. the honing steel. Yeah. Yeah. The honing steel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which, which I feel like I need someone smarter at cooking than me to, to like correct me or not. But like, from what I understand, I, I, I don't think that actually sharpens it. I think when you use a knife a lot, like you'll, you you run a really like small edge and you're gonna like bend the metal in multiple directions. Yeah, all that does is kind of like just straightens out. Yeah, the yeah. Well, as anybody saying it doesn't, it just cleans it up and and buff is okay. Uh, okay, guess, yeah. Buff's Buff is chibi. chibi says it corrects yep. it. Yeah. yeah, so you're you're straightening the metal, which which yeah already does help a lot. But it's it's not about having a really nice knife. You can have a really nice knife that like a lot of people that I know have focused on, you know, oh, I want a really nice knife. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean anything if if it's not taken care of. Hmm. So okay. uh, learn to sharpen your knives, learn to take care of your cooking tools like your don't scratch up your nonsticks. Learn how to use your dishwasher and you will have a much nicer time in the kitchen. Trust hmm. me, I suffer. <laughs> <laughs> Learn from my mistakes here, people. Yeah. Don't repeat what I did. 
don't, 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 don't live the live a lie like I did. No, uh, that's that's awesome. Uh, I can't, I cannot believe it. We we're like barely halfway through our topics, and we're at the end of the show. We need more show. We did talk a lot on bread. We did. We did. We did. I mean, so bread making was a big part of the pandemic. Okay, I yes. feel like it was justified, mm-hmm. but we got through it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I know. I mean, that that was actually the one of the hooks for me when you when you were talking about the the show. Oh, uh, Buffus uh, Chibi says I uh, hand wash and dry everything. So I'm I'm with you on that. Yeah. But but Forge had some interesting uh, <laughs> interesting thoughts on that. So and, and that's what we used to do too. But we have cats that lick stuff from our sink. Cats are just toddlers that can reach the ceiling. So you oh, know, terrible. <laughs> you no. gotta adapt when you can. <laughs> yeah. Well, fair enough. So now, like I was saying before, we had uh, we have run out of time, but only in the main show. So. If you're watching us right now on YouTube, number one, welcome to Saturday, because I won't have this up until tomorrow. But number two, uh, you, unfortunately, this is the end of the line for you. But if you are one of the lucky people on Twitch, you just stay right there. And we're going to have a whole extra hour uh, full of more show for you here. Uh, We're just going to take a quick break, run and grab some beverages, and then come right back. So if you're on YouTube, here's a video of me telling you that uh, that you're about to miss the rest of the show. It's right over, over there. Hi. I'm the Mighty Pong, host of the show that you just got done watching. Hey, if you'd like to see the entire show and not just the first hour, make sure that you watch on twitch.tv forward slash sin shop every Friday night for the main show. And on Monday nights, we have our special project night. So you can join us, build something and uh, basically throw stuff at us while we try to concentrate on things. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. So join us over there, twitch.tv forward slash sin shop. I am, of course, the Mighty Pong, and we will see you there. One take. Not one take.